Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be doing a solo run of this week's Grandmaster, which is the Devil's Lair. Now, more importantly than what the Grandmaster is, this week it's double rewards. So, plenty of opportunity to stack up on your Ascendant Shards, get some high stat exotics, all the good stuff. And, as per, I'm going to be showing you how to do it solo. Now, Devil's Lair holds kind of a unique place because... A lot of the other solos that you can do, some people might think, well, you kind of need to be able to do this, or you need to be able to do that. This one literally can be done solo by most people who play the game um, a fair amount. Now, as you can see on the screen, all fragments and weapons, aspects, mods, everything's on screen. I'm doing it on Warlock. Because this is double everything i will be probably putting out a titan and a hunter run so it doesn't matter what subclass that you mean you'll be able to take advantage of the double rewards so ascendant shards all the good stuff so every time i come in here uh on a gm i always come to the left i skip all the ads because literally we're just interested in taking this first uh, overload champion now i have heard you don't need to take him to get to get platinum but we're not going to take the chance, so just stop him, throw an arc grenade on him. Now, because arc grenades stun him, then it does act like he's constantly taking overload damage uh, while the grenade's on him. So now I'm just going to hit him with my heavy, which is arc, and it is arc surge. So, and linear fusion rifles are the overload weapon. 25% uh, additional outgoing arc damage, 25%. Additional incoming arc damage. A lot of snipers, a lot of tracer rifles. So this is the way we're going to do it. So what I'm going to do is, normally, if I have my rift back in time, I'm going to get it now, uh, I would throw the grenade down at the bottom there to deal with all the incoming thrall, put some damage on the champion, all the good stuff. As you can see there, we've, we've, uh, we've put damage on the champion. So here he goes. He's going to... He's going to put his shield up. I'm not... I'm not too worried about time with this, although I, I definitely felt this was quite an efficient run. We'll just finish him here. But most of, most of the people watching this are going to have an idea how this strike works anyway. So for the benefits of the solo, I'm going to be explaining or trying to explain where to stand, what adds to focus... More than I am explaining step by step every single little thing I'm doing. So when we get here, I like to take the wizard down first. Obviously because arc damage and it's heavy duty income and arc damage. Pick off the rest of the ads and then just throw a grenade on the top of the stairs. Stop this overload. And then I'm just going to hit him with as many shots as I feel comfortable with. Because even though, and we all know this, even though... Overloads are stopped by grenades, arc grenades, uh, which keeps them overloaded. They still stand the chance of teleporting away and getting their health back. So what I'd done there was I put the grenade, <clears throat> put my rift down, and then two hits with the heavy back to my scout rifle, which is my overload weapon. So here's where a barrier. Now in this room, you do have one barrier, which is him. And you have an overload, which we'll get to at the end. I leave the overload till last because you've got two kind of annoying snipers. And as you can see there, we've got two wizards. So throw a grenade. Whenever I throw a grenade, when at all possible, I will also put my rift down so that any of the ionic traces that I get, they, they'll give me back uh, grenade, uh, grenade energy and they'll also give me back rift energy. So I'm just kind of clearing ads in the, the in the in the the immediate proximity, and then once I've cleared those, that's the last of the snipers. There is an an arc captain there. Now as you can see, you can swap, uh, you can swap between these two areas, so just so that the ads, and more so the captain, the snipers, don't have a shot on you the minute you appear. That is not what you want. So let's use what arc scout. And we'll just finish them off. And that just leaves the overload. You don't want to make your points of attack too predictable. 
So we've stunned this overloader. When at all possible, again, whenever I stop, whenever I throw a grenade on a heavy ad, I like to get my melee off as well. Because if you're... If you've got a... Brain's going to mush here. <laughs> if, if, you, if you're amplified, <clears throat> your melee will explode three times. And because it's arc, and because it, it, the melee itself does actually a fair bit of damage, uh, <clears throat> it's it's always worthwhile just trying to get it on a heavier ad. Once you've cleared this area, go down here. Now you've got three waves. You'll see security measures deactivated. Zero of three. Now... There is a set amount of ads you need to clear in order to go from, uh, in order to go to the next wave. The way it kind of works is it's nearly all of the ground ads. Now I say nearly, it's not always all of the ground ads. So <clears throat> this first wave, you get an overload, as you've seen there, we've killed the overload. Bunch of kind of ground ads, best way to put it. But you're also going to get a wave once you clear a majority of the ground ads before it says deactivated one. You'll also get a wave of shanks. Now this will happen between waves, this wave and the next wave. You'll get it just about every wave. So once you take out, you see what I'm doing there, you get these three solar. Uh, when I say solar, it's because the weapon they've got is solar. Once you take those out, Regardless of what else you've taken out, now you'll get your shanks. Now they come from the left hand side, so I just put a grenade. And the minute I get my rift back, I put the rift because you're a little lock buddy. Will do wonders against these things. Another cool thing about the the arc soul is one of the more one of the modifiers for this happens quite a bit as well. Is when you take out vandals, they leave spider mines. Those mines that pop up from the ground and slow you. Your arc soul will shoot them when they pop up. Without you having to aim. Another cool thing about the, the arc soul. We see there's a couple of exp uh, exploder. There's all, there's, the exploders don't always come to your location all the time. And the last ad you'll probably have left in this area. Will be an arc captain that's up to just to the right of where we're looking now. You'll see me going for him now. The next wave will not come out on this first uh, for this first thing. The next wave will not come out until you've cleared all of the ads, all of them, including this captain. So we just want there we go. So you see there, security measures deactivated. One of three. So what we'll get now is we're going to get the introduction of the hive, and eventually, once we take out some of the wizards, some of the ads. We will get a barrier. The barrier will spawn down next to where we are, just just in front of us. So, the ads I look out for here are the wizards. You can see all the wizards there, but just you be able to see just at the top of your screen there is a vandal. He is an elite vandal. He will snipe you, but you need to clear him. So I'll show you how to do that. He, he keeps popping out, but the minute you hit him, he'll kind of try and run away. So we're just trying to take these wizards out. There's where a barrier so you get a bunch of ads first and there's the barrier so we put enough damage that he won't go anywhere he will just put his shield up and stand in the same place and allow us to deal with him without him running too far you don't really want to let him let him get away too far now the thing about that vandal you see we put a, a, a hit on him he might not come back until we go down sometimes that happens so once you take, this is kind of like the secondary lot of ads we're getting now. A couple of, uh, two, two Hive Knights, but there's, I think there's all in, there's four uh, Fallen Captains. Two Red Bar, two Yellow Bar. So what I kind of tend to do is I stay here, and then when I get my grenades, then I, I kind of drop a grenade in their vicinity, and just keep them under control. Now, because of the teleportation, sometimes, as you've seen there, the grenade never hit them, but they teleported back into the grenade. And there we go. And just, there'll always be a couple of little ads uh, peppered about, especially with the Fallen. And just see if I can get him. There we go. The sniper's still up. There are some vandals just in front of us around the corner. So when you get to here, 
regardless, that vandal will come back. You see? And because we put shots on him, easy money. Now, I don't like to push too, too far up to get these captains because as soon as you take out these sets of ads, you'll get the next wave. So this captain went round to the right, which we've seen him go. He's quite close. There must be another thing up. Let's have a look. Oh, there's still... There, there, there we've got my, my shanks first. Put down my rift. Get my... Now, you see, the minute I put down my rift, the oxel started going after the shanks, which is which is perfect. So, let, let's recap before we get one. Well, the last wave is going to be two overloads and, and sniper shanks and... Uh, sorry, snipers and, and just a whole bunch of fallen there won't be any hive in this next wave so what i tend to do is come back down here i wait for them all to come down because the, the eventually the overlords will come down so you see there and then i throw a grenade which stunned both of them and then pop the super that now the super might not be enough to kill one it normally does but it might not be enough all the time so we'll stop him if it isn't don't worry about it just switch to your scout rifle I've got a grenade on him, hopefully. There we go. That's the two overloads. Two overloads finished. Now there's just a bunch of snipers. We've got another one of those elite snipers up at the back. You have to be very wary with them. And the great thing about the Wish Ender is, with this last wave, you get invisibles. These guys, you get the Marauders. The Wish Ender will see them. Obviously, you can see... Because, it obviously, wall hacks is one of its things. Now... I always shoot the spider mines before I need to go forward. But now I'm just going to make sure I take out the snipers and that there's no other ads hanging about. So let's just recap. The first wave, when you when, once you've cleared the original overload and barrier that are in this area, the first wave is one overload and a bunch of fallen. The second, and, and you, you'll know you're at the end of that wave when you get the shanks. The second wave is some fallen, but now you've got uh, now you've got Hive, so you have a, a barrier. And uh, again, you know that wave is over when you get the Shanks. And then the final wave is two Overlords and just a load of, a load of Fallen. The, you will get Locate Sepix Prime before you've cleared all the ads. So there could be, as you've seen in the video, there'll be Snipers, Vandals, still up so be very careful when it says locate sepix prime don't just come running out feeling like all the ads are dead because you'll still have some vandals to take out as you can see here we had some vandals but there is an overload so what i like to do is if at all possible i push around here now i'm going to put some some heavy duty stuff on them here I put my melee and now back to the scout and he's finishable. I just want him out of there. And we've dropped a whole bunch of heavy. One thing I will say about this, because you're using the wish ender, heavy shouldn't be, you shouldn't really struggle for it for too long. There might be sections where you don't have a lot, but because you're using an exotic primary, you will drop a fair amount of heavy. In this area, I put a pre, a, a, a preemptive grenade in the, in the kind of entrance to that little room. I'm not looking to take out the the barrier just yet. See how I'm moving around to the left? The barrier will follow. And now what I can do is break his shield, which then makes the rest of the enemies, the vandals. I'm not too worried about the I'm not too worried about the smaller uh drag. It's more the vandals because they have uh line rifles, uh arc line rifles and they hurt. There's a whole bunch of them down here where I'm shooting. So be very mindful of those, you see. That should be all of them down. There was four. I killed four. There's another one over this side. So And then a whole bunch of ads down to the left, which, again, throw the grenade. Make sure you, 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 you add into that. Uh, throw the grenade and put your rift down. Now, this is a very important to note. Do not go in front of the building. This building just, just in front of us. Do not go past the front, like the back of it. Because that starts, you'll get, you'll get the, you'll get all the rest of the ads spawning in 
you don't want to have when you're trying to manoeuvre around this front area. You don't want too many ads. And I certainly, I certainly don't want this overload. So, what I do is I come up here. I'm just going to pop my super, which should take him down quite low. But sometimes, as we know, we might get away with it this time, which we are going to. Sometimes you'll do that and uh, he'll teleport away and he'll get his health back. So, you know, I, I, I definitely would use the super there. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't worry about it too much because with the setup we've got, any arc ability kills, well, obviously we're going to get uh, Ionic Traces back, but we're also going to get Conduction Times, which is basically it's what the Crown of Tempest offers. The reason why I'm using the Crown, even though I'm using Chaos Reach, so I'm not using, I'm not using the Boots, uh, the reason why I'm using Chaos, uh, the reason why I'm using uh, Crown of Tempest with Chaos Reach is for that ability regeneration. Because every, as I say, we get that conduction times and you can get it times one, times two, times three. And it, and it gives you more ability energy back. So because this build and this run is based about having more, more abilities back faster as opposed to our super lasting longer uh then that that's that's got to be that's got to be the focus is, is getting your grenades and your rift back now i probably wouldn't bother with this barrier i'm well impressed with that grenade though but i probably wouldn't bother with the barrier because he's got too many places around here where he can hide and you'll see here i i get him down we get we put some decent damage on him all it takes is one teleport. I have to back away. Now I've managed to break him, so he never got that much health. But all he's going to do here, I'm hitting him. We're getting some good damage. That if he goes behind that rock, now he's got his health back. I'm going to pop my super here. Too far away to really be super effective. And there. That's all he had to do was go behind that rock and I am going to struggle to repeatably break his shield. So I decide I've used my super, I've wasted my super trying to get him down. You don't really have to take him down. Now, what you are going to get now, I've jumped up on the build and I went in front of the build and what you are going to get is you're going to get the two brigs but more importantly, you're going to get the, the spider tank. So what I like to do with the spider tank is I stay back kind of back on this rooftop and periodically ping grenades over and then break the shields with uh, the wish ender because my linear fusion rifle won't it just it just won't reach over there the storm chaser while it has uh good burst damage good good single shot damage because obviously the three burst it has no range uh not not real range and 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 kind of what i mean by that is because it's a three burst, it doesn't have the stability to land the three bursts close together. And when you're ranging it, the more range you've got, the closer together you need, you know, those shots to be. The, the point of impact becomes smaller. So you'll see in front of us, it's kind of like a, a pipe. That pipe, for the most part, will block any shots from the spider tank. Now... If you look where I'm shooting, it's kind of like a, a framework that goes over the pipe to the left of where I'm shooting. That is when, when you see when you see the spider tank shoot, just move to the left because that will block all the shots. Now, what you're probably going to have to do from here is you're probably going to have to break four legs in between thorn grenades. So, there we go. I don't actually know what hit me there. Uh... So we just break the legs. You can see good damage from Wish Ender. Uh, one impact in, two out. So whatever you're doing on the front end, as you can see, 9,000 uh, on the front end. We're doing double that coming out because the obviously the, the arrow splits and has two exit points. So it's nearly 30,000 damage. Uh, so, yep, yeah, I'll just... 
I'll break. Uh, you can break the bottom set of legs, the the middle set of legs. Sorry, from sh- by shooting the 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 planted part of the foot. <laughs> I know it's a tank, and we're talking about legs and feet. Uh and then once you know when you broke it, because you'll get a big damage number. It'll be like a hundred thousand. Now what happened there? Is the yellow number was only 4,000, but one of the exit wounds was a hundred and odd thousand. So I knew I broke the leg. So what we're going to do, we'll do that. We've got two brigs up, and I haven't really bothered about them too much. I like to get the tank out the way first. And now that I've just got one more brick on the right hand side. And then we'll just clean up. We've got one overload in front of us below us. In, in front below. Uh, we've still got the barrier. Uh, and then might be some straggler ads, but we're gonna get a couple of overloads come up where the spider tank is. That's the the walker down. So now we can start working on these brigs. Be careful because there's two of them. So we are getting, you know, we're, we're taking a bit of a chance with this guy here. I'll just kind of stay here with my my rift. Now, the reason why I've chose this point where I'm now is the box to our left will block any incoming damage if the brig on the other side decides to get a bit frisky. And then once we break, obviously once you break the chassis, you'll see it. We'll then get a crit point. And once we get the crit point, then we'll use Storm Chaser. Once we've took these two brigs out, what we'll do is you'll probably get to see the first wave of ads. There's the brig uh, broken, so we'll just put some, just take them out with the storm chaser. I can see the brig on the left hand side. I've got a brick of heavy, which is why I use normally what I do is I, I put about three or four shots down on the brig and then I finish them with the wish ender. But because I did have a brick waiting for me now what i done there was i waited i waited for the brig to move before i fired my grenade once you do so much damage to the brig they'll do like a sideway kind of uh dodge get them to do that and then throw your grenade because they won't dodge twice back to back so that's that's where we are we've took out the brigs there's what overload. I'm just taking out the stragglers now. Use Wish Enders uh, wall hack. Uh, just take out the sniper here. We don't want any kind of long range damage coming in. Uh, wait for him to come back. We want to get him in some sort of open scenario. Try and keep him overloaded. So what we'll do is once we take this overload it, well then then what we're gonna do is try and take the barrier. Now there will be some invisible marauders, obviously using the wish enders wall hacks. You can see I just seen the back end of one there. Uh it will detect them there. You can see them there. Just go down the other side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move up the right hand side. There we go. You can. It, it makes it. I won't say it makes it like super easy. Just checking. Just one more guy there. I'll go up and get this heavy. My my scout rifle obviously has. Uh. Whatever it's called. <laughs> my. <laughs> that's a, that's a great guide, isn't it? So you're gonna just do whatever with whatever to whoever. <laughs> just I don't care. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my scout rifle has shit to loot, so I don't actually physically have to go and get ammo, which is really good at the boss because you can just you can deal with you know getting getting ammo and and actually while we're while we're on the subject, it will get you orbs as well. There we go. That's the that's the barrier. So I can just shoot as long as I've got my my scout rifle out. I can shoot uh, the ammo or orbs of light, and I will collect them. Now what you've got is, I'll just put my rift down here, you've got an arc-shielded captain. There, there he is. 
Now, he can be a pain in the backside, so I like to just get rid of him really quickly with, with the Storm Chaser. But now you have maybe a couple of stragglers, a, co a couple of ads that are just hanging about. You just want to make sure there are none of these guys about because there's nothing worse than trying to do damage to a champion while you've got one little lad who just refuses to die. So we'll just put our grenade over and then just keep putting the scout on him because... Obviously, uh, we are within range that where Wish Ender can, can do a bit, but I don't want to go into the boss, if at all possible, with no ammo. Now, I don't think I go in with a lot here, uh, but like I said already in the run, I will just stop him. Like I said already in the run, we'll just use my super, because we're using Wish Ender, it's not like we won't drop. There's some heavy out there. We won't drop any heavy ammo. The Wish Ender will, because pr Exotic Primary stands more of a chance to drop heavy than normal. So, here we are at the boss. So, everything has been attacked from range, and, you know, I've got places where I go, and, and I've got ads that I focus first. This is going to be absolutely no different. So, as soon as we go in, we're going to go into this room, and this room here, too... For better or for worse, it's going to be our point of attack. So I just, I'm going to try and wait. It never, it never kind of, normally the other overload comes a bit faster than that. So, as you can see, you've got to be very careful with, with, with stopping these champions. Because obviously if there's other ads there, there's one champion gone. We are we put ourselves in the scenario of trying to take champions down while ads are shooting us. So we've got a gr another grenade. So I'll just put a grenade on him, and then we're just we're just gonna bite the bullet and just wish end a, a, a storm chaser him, wish end him, storm chaser the ads uh, into oblivion. And there we go. Now once you once you take these ads down, and there's no other ads, then the then the boss will become active. Now, you will get a wave of ads coming straight in, so it works. And, and, and almost in a similar fashion to uh, the first room that we were in, where you get waves of ads. We just take out. This captain is always, always really aggressive. Uh, you'll get waves of ads that almost mirror themselves on each side. So any ads you get on one side, the more than likely you're going to get the same ads on this side. So... That means on the other side, we do have a captain. Now, this captain can be troublesome. So I'll just put a grenade down there. And then once you get this captain, if you can get this captain down pretty quickly, I'll just finish him. This is another way you can traverse this, this area. You can go underneath where I'm going now and you can traverse the area. You can go to the other side without having to deal with the boss. That's the, really the worst that was the worst firing I've ever done of a scout rifle. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just put a whole, a whole mag, if I can, because we know we're going to get shanks. I'll put a whole mag into the boss, and we'll just we, we've got to shoot that that brick to get well one heavy. <laughs> and what I try and do most of the time is I try and throw a grenade to the other side, and what you'll see me doing. So let, let's just break up the areas. This this is our side. I know the, these aren't great call-outs here, but this is our side. And then you've got the other side. I'll throw, throw a grenade to the other side and let the grenade do its work. And then I'll use, if I put a rift down, I'll use my arc buddy on this side. Now, any kills the arc buddy gets, my arc soul, any kills that the arc soul gets... Uh, will produce ionic traces, which will help me get my abilities back faster. Now, I threw a grenade over the other side, kind of wasted my grenade, so now, uh, if at all possible, we want our arc soul to get some kills. And there we go, and that should produce more of the same, more, more abilities. And as I say, any ability kills you get will produce Arxel, uh Ionic Traces, and that's kind of what we want, as we want our our 
abilities to come back as fast as possible. So, right, so as soon as you come in, you'll have the two overloads. Then you'll get a wave of ads coming in, probably not not a, not, not a massive wave, but you get those two arc captains. And then periodically after that, you're going to get waves of just normal shanks. Once you break the shield, so you take out these four servitors, once you break this, then you're going to get a different wave of ads that will in include a lot of ravenous, which are basically the yellow bar shank, uh, uh, vandals and acolytes. They hurt a bit more than normal. I'm just, I've seen a brick of heavy, so I'm just going to charge around here. That one gave me a bit more. I got five out of that brick. Uh, and that will be the wave of ads that leads you up to the boss going into what I commonly refer. Now, if you're new to the channel and you've never seen me do any of these sorts of things, this is what I class as the boss's cocoon phase because the boss is immune and you have to perform some sort of mechanic to make the boss not immune. I threw that grenade too far that time, so now I need my arc soul to generate some abilities for me. And we'll just use Scout to... So it's not going to... My Oxhall isn't going to be able to kill them all the way over there. But as you can see, I've got all my abilities back now. I'm just by leading the Oxhall at the enemies. So this is what I class the boss's cocoon phase. So as I say, the boss goes immune. You've got to perform some sort of mechanic to get the boss to come out of its immunity phase. In this case, it's killing those little... The, the, the other server. So what I'm going to do is just try and get a couple of shots off. I know that there's ads coming in. So we'll get back in here, put my rift down. And as you can see just out there, there we go. Well, full wave of ravenous ads. I'll just keep myself safe. I have another grenade, so I'll toss a grenade over the other side. You can see I'm really kind of chaining that arc damage. And I'm pot shotting as well. You see another knight. Now, that first... Sorry, knight, captain. That first captain is very aggressive. So I'll just throw a grenade out there as well. Is very aggressive. He'll come... The very first time, he will just come chasing you into the room. Nothing you can do about it. I've got my grenade again. There is another captain over the other side. I've got a bunch of heavy. I can use my storm chaser on him. And there we go, That's the, the that was that last Ravenous. So I'll just throw my grenade over. Now, you'll see it there. <clears throat> You'd have seen a set of numbers pop up and they were blue. Just for, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, I know you guys know all this stuff. But, uh, you know, if I'm doing a guide, it's only right I should say. That let me, that, <clears throat> that let me know I would broke the captain's shield. Because obviously, those numbers are the same, <clears throat> the same as... Has shield, which lets you know that you you've hit him. So there we go. That's him dead. And I've got I've got a few bricks of heavy up there. So now I want to, I want to try and get some damage on the boss. I'm just trying. I'm using the wall hacks to see, but I think I think there actually is another ad out here. But my wall hacks never detected them. I can't remember. There was what there, there was definitely one time where there was a ravenous, and he just comes right into the room and faces me right up. So now this wave of so so the first wave we got uh, the first wave we got uh, the uh, just normal ads with the captains and what have you. The second wave we got the ravenous, and 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 they, they weren't too bad. I'm just going to use my super to try and get rid of one of the champions. After you break this, the, the boss's shield the, the, the second time, what's going to happen is you're going to get these champions. And luckily, I managed to take them up, the two champions a lot faster than I normally do. This champion normally runs away, but as you can see, we dealt with them really quickly. And that's because we managed to stop one of the champions pretty fast and just deal with them. Once we break this shield... Once we take these ads and we get the boss in play, we should get another wave of ravenous. Let's just see what's out there. I want to regenerate as much 
uh, ability as possible. Now, it's worthwhile noting that you will get uh, for the, on this wave when the when the two champions come in, you'll get a wave of uh, acolytes, not acolytes, Jesus, Dreg, who are running about with uh, solar shotguns. Now, when we were in the room where we had to uh, do the security measures three three times, we also got a, a wave of those. They're basically running about with mini Lord of Wolves. It's like the captain's shotguns, and these dregs have got them. So when you get the champions, you will get a wave of those. You also, one time, and you'll have seen that already in the video, you get Exploder Shanks coming as well. Again, you have to watch out. Now, somebody just threw a grenade, so I knew that there was still a dreg up. When that dreg goes down, probably means that very shortly, we're going to get a wave of uh, Shanks in. Now, with the Shanks, you get, I'm trying to think here, four, eight, about 11, 11 or 12 Shanks. So now, you see there, there's my wave of Shanks. So I'll try and throw a grenade over the other side, and then just use my Arc Buddy here just to deal with some of these. Now, because of the, one of the, one of the mods on the Artifact, Art kills uh, when you're when you're when you've got your uh, am when you're amplified, they will cause arc explosions. So you might you might want to change some of them with your scout rifle. I I was just more interested in getting grenades on them and just killing them out like right with the wish ender. So there you can see it's not a massive wave. There's the boss. So we're just going to put a super on the boss. Boss doesn't have a ton left. We're probably going to go after him with with uh, once we get these another another wave that you get is these marauders. Uh, now most of the time, I've got my I've got my well my my rift. Most of the time, they will go in in here into that room to our left. So I'm not really too bored about them. Because they can stay there, but as you can see, what I'm going to do is put some shots with Storm Chaser. Uh, and now we're going to get another wave of these. The, now these, what I've noticed about the this big wave is, is the longer you've got the boss alive at the end, these can keep coming. These, but they're, they're not, they're not, these waves of uh, resilient. Uh, the yellow bars. It's not that they'll come forever, but you can get multiple waves of them. So I'm not too worried. I'll take I'll take as many down as as I need to to be safe. As the, the other captain. Uh, but I'm not worried about killing every single one of them. If just a little thing here. If you do, there's the invisibles along with uh, some vandals. Just trying to use my wall hacks. And there you go. We're just going to kill him. As long as you do a bit of damage to any ads that are still left up. If you kill them. Uh, if they die because you popped your, you killed the boss. As long as you've done some damage to any ads still remain. When they obviously despawn because you've killed the boss. You, you'll, get, you'll get credit for them. And you'll get score for them as well. And there you go, guys. You'll have seen the rewards. It's double rewards, so there's quite a bit to get. But the buzzard is the weapon this week. Not so hot, but the double rewards are good. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed the run. I will get a couple more out this week. And I will see you guys in the next video.